Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm back from vacation, so let's get into Let's Play Grandia 2. This is the anniversary edition on Steam, and I will apologize in advance if the audio kind of goes a little up and down for my voice. I'm trying to get used to where I can put my hands, like I've got my my new Yeti mic attached to my keyboard tray, so I can't put any weight on the keyboard tray, otherwise I get a little reverb, and anyway, so let, let's hope this all goes well. Anyway, Grandia 2 is the second game in the Grandia series, and the reason why we're starting with 2 and not 1 is because I have not played more than the first hour of Grandia 1. I've tried on two occasions, and I just couldn't get into the game. I couldn't uh, grasp around these super, super young characters that I think were like under 10 years old, and I just couldn't attach to it. Yes, I realized that many of the characters from early Final Fantasy games were supposed to be this young, but they didn't really come across that in the storyline, nor did they ever really mention it, so it didn't really bother me. I could look at them, it's like, well, they look like they're supposed to be older than that, they dress like they're older than that, so they are older than that, and I didn't have to think about them acting like children. In Grandy 1, they kind of act like children. Part of the plot is like finding your friends and stuff like that. Anyway, admittedly, I should probably give it more of a chance than I have. And at one point, I'm sure I will go back and actually start playing that game. But for now, Grandia 2 was my introduction to the series. And if it's your introduction to the series as well, I hope you enjoy it. Because this game, much very unlike what I've been working on recently, it is not super deep. It is not you know, all over the place with this background information. It's just mindless fun. And there's a, some great characters, some hit and miss voice acting, and some energetic music. So, let's start a new game. Now, unlike the original versions of the game, uh, there is actually a hard mode now. Uh, originally, this game was released on, was it the Genesis or Sega Saturn? It was released on a Sega console and then it got ported to PS2. The PS2 version is so horribly broken, it is not even funny. This version is so wrecked with all of the things that have gone wrong, you know, bad coding, uh, like glitches all over the place, and it just looks like ass. It really does. The colors are all faded and nothing is very clear at all. Here, they've done a really good job of updating the original Sega version of the game and bringing, you know, some of the cutscenes that the PS2 version introduced. But other than that, they've really not done a whole lot to this game other than make it look good. It's a 10 year anniversary and it really is a very nice game. Now, normally I wouldn't play on a hard mode, but in my test run of this game on this particular version, I wanted to see if there was a reason for the hard mode. For the most part, it doesn't change anything. I'm still going to start one-shotting characters as soon as I get the abilities to do so, which is not long into the game. So I'm actually going to play the hard mode. In pretty much any other LP I do, I will always play the original, but I figure I might as well give you at least one hard mode when it's not too hard. Though, if you're unprepared later in the game and you get yourself jumped, it can lead to a very bad time and a pretty easy game over. So there are at least some elements to the difficulty mode. It's not just a blanket 15% increase on HP, though for the most part that's what it is. Uh, enemies will use a few different spells. Uh, the game designers tried to make it seem as though... Hmm, weird on the audio there. Um, try to make it seem as though they did a lot more balancing for the hard mode. It doesn't come across that way. Uh, the game has always been really, really easy, so there's no real reason uh, to really think about it that way. But uh, the hard version is pretty much as fun as the normal version, and my strategies will probably be able to apply to both versions anyway. Uh, there's also very little difference as far as gameplay goes between the three versions of the game. I think there was also a PC port, like, way back in the day in like 02 and that would have been on physical cds not on steam so um i would guess it would apply to that one it's the only version of the game i haven't seen anything from so i would guess it's basically just another port like the ps2 ps2 version but it may not be Basically, in this LP, unlike with uh, Xenogears and Xenosaga, I'm not going to delve super deep into the storyline. Uh, you know, the, the, the deep, deep stuff that I was doing in those games. It's just... 
I've spent over a year working on these great ideas and these big, deep storylines. I want to play something fun now. And this game is most certainly that, loading screens aside. So let's have fun with these characters who are going to get introduced to us. And as you can tell from the music already, it is way, like, super high energy, lots of, you know, emotion in there, adventurous, ready to go. I love that about this game. As you can see, we're back to some very not, you know, I guess, full featured realistic kind of sprites. But that's fine. There's no problem with that. I can play games on NES for all I care as long as I have fun. This game is a lot of that. So let's see what we actually have going on here. We got some... What are they? Nuns? Sisters? They look like that has some kind of religious garb. And we're silently walking over a bridge. Hey! Just as we were getting kind of bored. Random bird flying with... What are those? Bombs or something? I have no idea. What are we doing here? As you can see, the music does change relatively often in this opening cutscene. Don't let me down, Sky. And here is our main character, Ryudo. And we have enemies already. Look at that. Do these guys talk? They seem like kind of lizard men. In fact, I think that's the name of these guys in the game. I could be wrong. Oops. Okay, maybe those that bird did have bombs. Oop. I think we won that one. And what did you get? You got a blue Pokeball? Uh-oh. Run! <laughs> Distraction only worked for so long. Sky, over here. I would have liked it if they had used the line from later on in the game, uh, called uh, "Sky Take Flight," based on one of his texts. But uh, that's fine too. As you can see, the little bird is having you know, trouble. I cannot take much more of this. Quit your belly aching and fly, damn it! Fly! Oh! my main character. He's gone. <laughs> It's a nice sunset. I finished the job, didn't I? Not a lot of detail, but it's a very nice sunset. Like, the ground and stuff isn't great, but the sunset itself, beautiful. There are some points of silence in this game. Not too many, but there are yes, some. in your own crude fashion. Here, take your money. Father, um, don't be rude. I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> don't bother. I'm used to it. I won't have you speaking to his kind. Come, his kind? What kind is he? Male? I cannot stand him. What as, a pompous fool. As you can tell, Work. not a barrel of laughs. The well, voice acting well, is kind of You're growing up, Ryudo. Hit and miss. Uh, if it weren't for work, I'd have nothing to do with that guy. But business is business. And what is your business? She was a fine-looking girl, though. I don't care for her or the kindness of strangers. As you saw earlier, this is a 2000-era game, so this is before, I think, all of the Xenosaga games and after Xenogears. And as you can tell, the uh, graphics kind of fit that. In the original version and in the PS2 version, of course, there were a lot more jaggies. I have anti-aliasing turned Sky? off for this. Yudo. Looks like we have another job. But it looks pretty good as is. And they actually do a much better uh, job with the camera controls in this game than I think they did in pretty much any of the uh, Xenosaga games, since you didn't have control in those games. Hey, and Xeno Gears. I'm still sore from that fall. Which no, just you. wasn't great. Ouch! Okay, okay! Sky, all right already! The bird it's is named Sky. Have work, right? And he attacks Ryudo constantly because, I don't know, they seem like, you know, the old companions have been together for quite some time. 
It says the Church of Granis wants to hire you as a bodyguard. So, working for Granis, huh? Now I really don't want to do it. A job's a job. Right. right. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's what it means to be a geohound. Geohound. Basically, this game's word for a mercenary. And that's about it. Okay, do I have control? I'm about to gain control. Let's move around. All right, so R1, L1 moves the screen around. That is a save point. We'll be going to that later. And items in this game hover around the world map. Or, well, this isn't really a world map. It's an area map. And there are, like, uh, kind of traps, as you can see. I'm walking slowly through here. I don't have a choice there. So let's make sure I get everything. Um, if you get kind of motion sick... Yeah, that ladder's been kind of cut off. Sometimes this game kind of does that because of how I have to move the camera around a lot. I like the camera in that its uh, reaction time is really quick and I can move it around really easily to find all of the things I want to find. But that may be a problem for some people if they don't like me spinning the camera around a lot. And I will be doing that specifically so I can get as many items as I can. Uh, so I will be doing a lot of stuff like this. So if that's a problem for you, uh, just kind of be aware. Now, we hit a save point, hit the X button, you can recover for free at any save point, and of course save. So we'll just recover, and we'll head up here. Not that we really need to, we haven't fought anything yet. Ah, treasure, I like those. Blizzard charm, I, I, um, start. Start button is your menu. Now, I'm gonna bring up something a little bit later, um, not involving this game, just something new to the channel. And uh, when I do that, uh, I will complain about bad controls. In this game, it's not as big of a deal because we've had start as being our menu button in lots of um, Game Boy uh, type games like Pokemon and uh, the old Final Fantasy uh, Legends or adventure games that are on there. I think they use start as your uh, menu button as well. But anyway, here is our menu system. As you can see, there's uh, two layers, four icons on each. Equip, status, move and magic, which we'll get into later. Items, self-explanatory. Power up, we'll get into later. Skill equipped, quit. This also goes back to, um, you know, the uh, desktop if you need to. Circle is your cancel button. You can set character AI, which I've never used because I always control my characters. Anyway, let's throw some equipment on have the blizzard charm it's basically fly blizzard resistance or ice resistance and change of or defense not that it really matters we will deal with more of this stuff later okay let's see here did it just change my orientation of i think it just changed the orientation of my uh, camera controls because that doesn't seem right now uh, let's go into here change that back yeah that's what I wanted <laughs> I don't know why it changed on me so we're already down there so here's the other ladder so let's take a trip down here it's nice I like it anyway that you can control the camera on the ladder because in a lot of games it's like okay you're getting down the ladder and there's not a whole lot you can do ah we have enemies let's run into one Now, I believe, do they go straight into tutorial? They do not. Okay, so let's go into a very brief tutorial. There will be more opportunities to deal with this stuff later. Combo is uh, two attacks at least. Uh, you can get accessories to boost it up to three or more. Uh, critical has a chance to cancel an enemy's attack. And I will get into all of this stuff in greater detail later on. Items obvious, moves and magic is obvious. Escape, defend, evade, basically evades to a set location and you can avoid enemy attacks. And AI sets the AI. So, um, combo is going to do more damage, but cancel has the ability to cancel. Now, if you look down on the right hand side, there's the uh, wait, uh, calm, and act. So, Command is entered at the line that I'm currently at with Ryudo's character in the bottom right-hand side there. At this point, I enter my commands, and then the character icon will move along the gauge over to act. Once it hits the end of that, I will execute my ability. Now, if you hit somebody with a critical, when they're between the calm and the act, you will cancel their turn. So watch this. We cancel their turn, they move back, and they don't get a chance to hit us. 
Now, later on, we'll get abilities that can do this instantly, as well as other things. Now, if I decide to go here and use the evade command, I might be able to avoid taking damage. In this case, it wasn't so successful. There is also a stamina limit, so if you use evade and you make it so the enemy can't hit you uh, by out-staminating them or out-distancing them, they can only run so far on the battle map, then they won't be able to get their attack off. And there's your basic attack that does quite a bit more damage than the cancel ability, but of course, it, or the critical, but it doesn't cancel. The other thing you can do is you can actually use a normal attack to counter an enemy, and then you'll do, I think, like 10 to 15% more damage. So there's your you basic tutorial on that. I, will, I think we'll actually go into the tutorials in this game because it's worthwhile. They do a decent job of explaining how all this stuff works. But uh, anyway, here we have your... Oh, there's another enemy. Uh, enemies encountered on the world map, you can actually run up behind and get a preemptive strike on. So just keep that in mind for later. Here we have Tensei Ken Slash, which is his first uh, skill that he gets in the game. So let's use that on this guy. As you can see, it takes quite some time to charge up. Later on, the battles will go a lot faster as we level up our abilities. Say can slash. But this one also comes with the cancel ability, as you can see. However, using an ability, as you see there, I kind of waited at the wait location for a little longer than, you know, just moving straight forward. So there's kind of a wait time after that. Yeah. Now, you won't always be able to outspeed your enemies with your sword strikes like I am here, but of course, early on in the game, the enemies aren't really too difficult to deal with. These are your best friends. These are big chests. These come with three items in them, and in this case, Wound Salve is like a Phoenix Down, Hand Grenade is an in-battle attack item, and a Yomi's Elixir... Actually, no, Wound Salve is, I think, uh, just a healing item. Yeah, Wound Self is a healing item, Yomi's Elixir revives poison, cures poison, and this one is just another item that heals you. You're gonna get a lot of healing items in this game. Probably too many, but uh, that's fine. Okay. Now, we're gonna be able to go into the village here. Now, unlike previous games I've done LPs for where I only talk to a few people or I don't talk to any of the NPCs because they're just not interesting, the NPCs in this game are interesting for a number of reasons, which I'll get into once they stop talking. Oh, I thought this was voice act. Maybe it's not. Either way, I will get into this afterward. Okay, what are you guys talking about here? Preparations for the ceremony. What kind of ceremony? So I guess some people are going and some aren't? Is that the plan here? Looks like they're leaving the blondie behind. What service? I guess they are supposed to be church people, or at least they look like it. So maybe that kind of service? Seems the redhead and the blonde are kind of friends here. Karius's wife. Uh, Karius will meet uh, shortly here. Okay, what about this dude? Who are you? Probably none of our concern. They're part of the church, aren't they? Yeah, it is uh, entirely what we're here for, but that's kind of obvious. There's enough. What do they do? Storm through the door and beat charity out of you? <laughs> Drive away evil spirits. We're very fortunate to have the sisters. Evil spirits, huh? All times of ter terrible monsters are about. Thing is, in this game, the, there's no like night and day cycle, so all the enemies are there during the day too. It's kind of weird. So yeah, what about the girl who stayed behind? Miss Elena. That's how they pronounce it in the game. So uh, I know it could be Elena or Elena or you know whatever. But in the game, through the voice acting, they call her Elena. So that's what I'm gonna call her. She's a songstress of Granis. Oh, I'm getting Final Fantasy X flashbacks, or, well, X-2. Anyway, let's uh, move on here. Are you going to keep talking to me, or can I get to talking to some of the characters around here, or some of the NPCs? They need a bodyguard. Okay. So, Silesia, I guess, is the name of the city. You can kind of hit 
these guys. Just running into them, you don't have to match the button or anything like that. But yeah, there's lots of uh, people we can talk to around here. Do you know someone here? Do you know anything about the church? And this is kind of why I like uh, the NPCs in this game, because no matter who's in your party, you'll always get some kind of dialogue the first time you talk to most people. Um, like, you'll talk to him, and your characters will come up, and they'll actually say something, and the characters will interact both together and with the NPC. So there's actual character building in talking to the NPCs. So I will be talking to pretty much all of them. There are a few where there's just massive amounts in the town, and most of them say, you know, next to nothing, you know, after you've talked to the first three. But uh, we'll get to there when we get to there. Right now, we need to learn as much about this world as we can. And talking to people multiple times is something that you'll also want to do because usually they have at least two lines of dialogue, if not three. You're not blinded by money. As you can see, we've had a third line of dialogue from the same guy. And then he starts to repeat himself. So I probably won't talk to everybody three times, but if there's something particularly interesting, then I will probably talk to him a few times. Geohounds are savage. They bathe and drink the blood of monsters they slaughter. We bathe in the blood of our kill. What does monster meat taste like? A lot like little kid. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, Ryudo is a no fucks given kind of guy. And uh, he's pretty much demonstrating this very accurately in this very basic conversation with the kid who he's probably scaring the shit out of right now. Stop filling his head with nonsense. As you can see, he, he really doesn't, uh, he really doesn't care too much about what people think about him or, you know, um, you know, what he's saying to them and what effect that'll have. As you might guess, considering he is the protagonist of this game, he will grow over the course of this game, which makes for an interesting ride. Okay, so we have a bunch of tales here. Let's learn about some of the things. Two moons in heaven. You may have recognized that during the sunset. There was a second moon uh, toward the top of the screen. Second one is false. Misfortune it is. An abomination. When the moon brings the darkness, then shall the abomination appear. Darkness shall doom, and doom shall reign over all. Sign of Valmar. So they've talked about Granis and Valmar so far. Basically, Granis is the one that they worship at the church, and Valmar is the anti-god. So he's the devil, basically. Or at least that's the storyline that they've given us so far. Okay, so let's talk to you uh, about some of your other lines here. The Battle of Good and Evil. Long, long ago, the world was split in two. Light and darkness fought a bitter war that lasted for ages. But finally, Granis, the Lord of Light, defeated Valmar, the Devil of Darkness. I love the alliteration there, it's great. <laughs> Exhausted from the battle, Granis slept. Granis won, I know, but, you know, then how come the tale doesn't end with happily ever after? Good point. Guess you can look around you, Cliff Lad, you can't see the misfortune left from the battle. Well, we'll be able to see some more evidence of that battle later on, but uh, we have to actually move on with the uh, plot before we can do that. Palm speaks of woman trouble, yet it also speaks of great love. Never have I seen such a palm. Woman trouble and great love for you to check again. <laughs> As you can see, he's not particularly interested in, you know, having a girlfriend or anything like that. He just wants to, you know, beat the crap out of things and, you know, make some money. Seems to be what he wants to do. He seems like someone who wants to kind of be on his own. Calling for Elena, huh? <laughs> As you can see, there are lots of kids in this game too, but at least our characters are of a normal age. I think Ryudo is supposed to be somewhere between 17 and 22, which is pretty much your average for, you know, JRPGs. And I'm more than happy with that. Okay. Got beat up a lot. Was... <laughs> Everybody's nice, but of course, Elena is the nicest and the prettiest. 
Well, we should probably go check her out. Uh, she was the blonde, by the way. We will uh, see her before too long. It's in the eyes, lad. The same eyes I had at your age. This ought to be entertaining. Okay. I'm not going to talk about everything, you know, talk out and read out all this stuff. You know, some of it you can read for yourself. If it's particularly important or funny, then I'll probably read it out. Flying Jim Phoenix, huh? Okay. Yeah, the uh, Granite Cliffs we'll learn about later. Uh, it's the, the evidence I was talking about before. Hence, you know, it's got the name of Granis in it. It probably has something to do with Granis and Valmar and the Battle of Good and Evil. Okay. Pushed him over the edge. Down he fell into the depths. But his fall was broken. He began to climb and climb. He did it till he emerged like a phoenix. <laughs> yeah, this guy's insane. <laughs> oh, it's fun talking to crazy people in this game. The sisters have all gone to Garmia Tower in the Black Forest. Hope they're all right. Yeah. Many monsters in the region. They're all weak monsters, but they're there. Okay. Monsters screeched and turned, and it was just staring at us. We threw everything down and ran. Unless you're professionals. It's an important ceremony, but I'm not sure that the uh, sisters should have gone to such a dangerous place to perform it. Okay. Orchards are hardly producing. Nothing to sell, barely enough to eat for ourselves. As you can see, we're kind of building the world as well as building our characters at this point, which is why it's so important to talk to everybody. You just, you learn so much about the world and the, the plot will make more and more sense as time goes by. My kind of people. We just want other villages to enjoy our good food. So, you're altruists. Sure, that's, that's fine, but, you know, stay alive first. Altruism second, right? You know, you have to stay alive in order to continue to be altruistic. You, you, you got to think about number one. And uh, in Ryudo's mind, there is only one number one. All the misfortune is the work of Valmar. Okay, we will go into all the houses next time. I just want to talk to all the people that are floating around outside. Hey, come back here. A new song, Song of Light, or a Hymn to Granis. Praise be the name. Do you want to hear it? Um, not too big on hymns. And she's going to sing anyway. But you feel better now, huh? Nope. You could say something nice to the kid. Yeah, he, he's not a big fan of religion. He's not a big fan of people. He's not a big fan of pretty much anything except for his sword. Oh? bit old to be working so hard. Oh. So pretty much the entire village is like this. Gotcha. It's a tiny little village out in the middle of nowhere. That makes sense. You are despicable. Eh, he kind of is. I already talked to you, right? Yes, I did. Did I talk to you? Uh, darkness, something bad is supposed to happen. As long as your husband is with you. Two hounds are rarely given the opportunity to gain any experience in love. Okay. Bad harvest, epidemics, I don't hear any good news lately. Okay. As soon as you realize pitfalls of your optimism. <laughs> he's not an optimist, he's very much a pessimist. First time I played this game, I absolutely fell in love with Ryudo's character because I was, you know, a teenager at the time and he very much echoed a lot of the thoughts that I had in my head and a lot of the opinions that I had. Uh, he took it to a new extreme, obviously, but still, a lot of the things in my head were coming out of his mouth and I was just like, I wouldn't say that, but sure, okay. Oh yeah, we already talked to the kid. Unfortunately, there's no way of speeding up the dialogue, which that's kind of unfortunate. Ah, hardly. Apparently your Grannis has a keen sense of irony. The church wants my help. Where is the church? It's right over there. That's a point in any direction. Yeah, it's basically directly north of the screen there. 
He thinks he knows you. Basically, um, Geohounds have a very bad reputation, as we kind of heard from talking to the kid. And so it's difficult uh, for a lot of people to really talk to Ryudo in the game in general. He's just not a part of a class that's well, well respected. Okay, you talking about your mother load and your prayers and eat your vitamins and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, we'll talk to you. No mass today. Won't hear the song, it's just this beautiful voice. There's mass in the evening and song just sings for us. We're known throughout these parts. A girl can make a living by singing. Wow, some people have all the luck. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Not so much just from the fact of it, just because of what I know about the game in the future. Anyway. So we've talked to pretty much all the people floating around here. So next time we're going to go into the buildings, talk to these guys, and then we're going to proceed into the church. Anyway, that's all for this one. Actually, that's the end. The end is the place you go when you want to save. I, I probably should have mentioned this. Uh, can we actually recover your strength? Yeah, you can recover and save your game. So I'm going to do that. And yeah, I will see you guys next time.